Today we're continuing our discussion on key features and diving a little deeper into linear and exponential graphs. Some of the key features you should already know are increasing and decreasing, positive and negative, x and y intercepts, and how to write interval notation. But there's a little more for us to learn and we're going to start with continuous functions. Continuous means having no breaks. So if you have a line or a graph with absolutely no breaks in it, you have a continuous function. And it's really easy to see that lines that extend forever in both directions, whether they be linear or exponential, are always continuous. The not continuous side of life, however, gets a little bit tricky. For instance, if I have a line with a break somewhere along the line, I can see for sure that that's not continuous and that's if I'm looking at the graph as a whole. However, what if I only wanted to look at this little section of graph? There's no break in that section of graph, so if I'm limiting my graph to just that little tiny piece, I would have a continuous function. So when you decide if a graph is continuous or not continuous, you need to look and see if you're limited on what domain you're allowed to view. That can make a huge difference in whether you determine something is continuous or not. Let's move on to extrema. You've used extreme values a lot in the past in terms of minimum and maximum. And of course, we're referring to on a graph the lowest y value that that graph reaches and the highest y value the graph ever will reach. And so if I'm looking at this graph as a whole, I can see that this has a minimum value or the lowest y value this graph will reach is negative 3. Since this ray is going to continue in an upwards motion literally forever, we're going to have a maximum of positive infinity. Now, what if I wanted to only look at a small section of my graph? We're going to gray out this section from where x is negative 2 to where x is 4. And so I'm only looking at the section that's now in red that's going to change my minimum value and my maximum value for that section of graph. But since I already have something called a minimum and a maximum, I can't use those same phrases again. So while I can see that my new minimum is at 0 and my new maximum is at 9, I need to come up with something different, something to distinguish those values and so we would introduce the term relative minimum and the term relative maximum. That refers to just a small section of graph and its low x or low y value and its high y value. Let's take a look at an exponential function. Minimums on exponential functions are a little more difficult to define. We know that this exponential function has an asymptote and in this graph our asymptote is at y equals negative 3. So we can say that this graph approaches negative 3 but it's really difficult to define that specific minimum value since there really isn't one. It's easy to define the maximum however. This is still going to continue in an upwards motion forever so our maximum is at positive infinity. However, again, what if I only want to look at a small section of the graph? And now I'm going to cut off the section of graph from where x is 0 out to where x is 3. So I'm looking at the interval from 0 to 3. I can say now I have a relative minimum at negative 2 and a relative maximum at 5. Relative extreme values are much easier to find.
When we look at only a portion of a graph, we're doing something called restricting the domain. And there will only be a relative minimum and a relative maximum. Relative extrema only exists when the domain is restricted. Otherwise, you're looking at a domain that includes all the x values that your graph will ever reach. Real world scenarios often include domain restrictions. For instance, if you're running an experiment and the x-axis on your graph represents the number of days since the experiment started, you can't really have negative x values. You can't go back in time to before when your experiment started, right? So this type of situation naturally restricts the domain to where x is greater than zero. So when you do get situations that you have to talk about, you know, minimums and maximums and everything else, make sure you pay attention to what's actually going on to see if you need to restrict the domain. So in this next portion of our video, we're going to look at one linear and one exponential graph and we're going to see how the key features change when we restrict the domain. So looking at this linear function and the graph as it, at its in, or in its entirety, we can tell that this function is decreasing. We can see that the y-intercept is at 3 and the x-intercept is at 4.5. We can see that this graph is positive or above the x-axis everywhere that x is less than 4.5 or we could have written that as an interval from negative infinity to 4.5. This graph is negative everywhere that x is greater than 4.5 or again we could write it as an interval from 4.5 to infinity. The maximum is at positive infinity and the minimum is at negative infinity. And we have a domain overall that goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Those are all our x values on this graph. Now let's see, well before we go to that next step, I always find it really interesting and really helpful to pay attention to which key feature refers to which axis. I know that if I'm looking at the at the y-intercept, I need to look at the y values. And if I want to know where my graph is positive, I need to write my interval only using x values. So that may or may not help you in the future, but maybe you might want to make a list somewhere of which key features refer to which axis. Now moving on, Let's go ahead and restrict our domain. Let's cut out a section of graph. And let's see how those key features now change. We can see that the section of the graph in red is still decreasing. We still have an, a y-intercept at 3 and an x-intercept at 4.5. But where this graph is positive and where this graph is negative is definitely going to change. Instead of being positive from negative infinity to 4.5, this section of positive graph only goes from or only spans from where x is negative 3 up to where x is 4.5. The negative section of graph only reaches from 4.5 to 6. And now we're going to have new relative maximums and relative minimums as well. Our relative max is 5. It reaches up to where y is 5. And our relative minimum is down here at negative 1. We also restricted our domain, so we're going to have a new domain from negative 3 to 6. Now let's do the same thing with our exponential graph. Looking at its key features, we can see that this graph is decreasing absolutely everywhere. So from negative infinity to infinity, we're decreasing 
it has a y intercept at 7, an x intercept at 3. It's positive everywhere that x is less than 3 from negative infinity to positive 3. And it's negative from 3 to infinity. It has an asymptote at y equals 8, so we can say it approaches 8 for its maximum value and the minimum is going to be down at negative infinity. And since this graph spans the entire graph from negative infinity to infinity, we can write its domain that way or we can write its domain as all real numbers. Now let's restrict our domain. Let's cut off a section of graph. We're now just going to take our graph from where x is 1 and take the entire graph to the right of that. This graph, this section of graph, is still decreasing, so we'll leave that. But the y-intercept changes. Now we don't have any portion of that graph that crosses the y-axis, so we have no y-intercept. Our x-intercept stays the same. But now the positive section of our graph only spans from where x is 1 to where x is 3. I could write that as an interval, remember, 1 with a square bracket and 3 with a round bracket, since on the x-axis we're not actually positive. The negative section is going to stay the same because the entire section that was negative before is still part of our graph. The maximum, or now the relative maximum, will change because now our graph only goes up to where y is 6. The minimum is going to stay the same because the original minimum is still part of our graph. And our domain changes from 1 to infinity. Alright, you need to know the difference between key features of an unrestricted domain versus a restricted domain and be able to identify what portion of a, of a function is continuous. All right, we're going to wrap that up. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time.